It is the 2008th day of either March or April. I'm not even sure what day it is. This is Stuff and Things, where I talk about stuff and things. Let's go ahead and dive into my professionally branded steno pad and see what we got for Stuff and Things today. Number one, Q&A, the remote trigger question. This question came to me by Jason Davis on my Facebook Q&A group. Yes, I have a Facebook group. Yes, it's called Q&A with Zach Arias. Yes, there is a link below in the description. Jason wrote on the Q&A page, I'd like to hear your thoughts on something. I keep seeing people posting online or even on local photographers groups I'm in about remote photo shoots. So Jason goes on to talk about how you know, a subject is setting up light or is taking care of their hair and their makeup and arranging the camera and doing all of that. Then he goes on to talk about how, you know, a photographer is hundreds or more miles away, basically acting like a remote shutter release. To me, I would just feel like a long distance voice activated remote shutter release. How am I supposed to feel like I deserve any credit for the photos when the subject is doing 100% of the work and using their own equipment. I know more and more people are doing this and my way of thinking about it may be wrong. I'd like to hear what you think about it. What I love about the community of folks on my Q&A group on Facebook is just the varied and civilized and educated and awesome replies that Jason got on his question. We started with the question of how do I feel like I'm just a voice activated shutter release to discussing the value of Jackson Pollock's artwork. It really ran a huge range of topics. So as I said on the Q&A group, Jason, I'll say it here, is it's really not a lot different than most commercial shoots if you think about it. A photographer is walking in the door, they may have two, three assistants, You've got hair and makeup, you've got wardrobe, you've got the art director, you might have a graphic designer on hand giving feedback. Then you've got the art department, they may be doing the set dressing, you may have a wardrobe stylist and prop stylist. And the assistants might be running around setting up lights and even taking the first test shots. And then the photographer comes in just as everything's starting to come together and they may give some tweaks, they start directing the subject and then boom, they make a photograph. So in all honesty, I don't really see an issue with the remote photo shoots that people are doing. In fact, I applaud everyone who's doing anything they can these days to keep their creative juices flowing, to maybe find a new form of income that you know can help them out in these trying times. And honestly, it's kind of an interesting way to document this worldwide pandemic that we have going on. Yes, someone has their cell phone or their own tethered camera or you know, just a webcam, but they aren't maybe a photographer. They don't know how to take a picture with it. So I think it's probably uniquely challenging for a photographer to take over somebody's webcam or take over somebody's phone and try to make a photo shoot happen with it. I think it's an awesome exercise that probably more of us should do. Huh, I was gonna say that y'all, I don't have any ideas for the next assignment. If you have any ideas, you know, let me know, but maybe we should all try to do a remote portrait. Let's either see how easy it is or how difficult it is. That might be kind of cool. Take a look at what Jeremy Coward is doing with all of his projection portraits that he's doing right now. You know, yes, it's someone else's camera or phone or webcam or whatever, and he's projecting them into his studio and sitting there clicking a shutter release, but the final image is definitely a Jeremy Cowart image. John Keatley is doing a series of portraits via FaceTime, and when you look at his pictures, if you follow him on Instagram, those are John Keatley portraits. They definitely have his signature to them. My friend Jesse Stellick down in Florida, she's starting to do these remote portraits for clients and they look like Jesse Stellick photos. They really do. It's really quite remarkable what people are doing. Sefi Bergeson, I hear you. You've been Facebook messaging me. I'm going to get back to you, I promise. But Sefi out in India, he's doing remote portraits. And his stuff is really awesome too. Sefi, don't you have my number? Like, uh, y'all, this goes for everyone. Do not Facebook message me. Do not Facebook message me. Repeat after me. Do not Facebook message Zach. That is the worst platform to try to get in touch with me. 
seriously. Like, I hate Messenger. Can't stand it. It's only second to Instagram's inbox. Hate that one too. So if you want to get in touch with me, leave me a comment because I read all the comments here on my YouTube channel. So Jason, thank you very much for asking that question. It was an awesome conversation that we had around it. If you think our next assignment should be doing remote portraits and trying to figure out the technology and the way to do that, let me know downstairs in the comment section. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe we won't. Maybe we will. If there's enough interest, we'll give it a try. I'm already trying to figure out how I would do it. I have no idea. I don't know how I do it. I was today years old when I found out that there is a YouTube community tab on my channel. I saw videos, playlists, community, and I'm like, what's community? Click, oh crap, there's like a community page here on the channel. So I made a post, got some replies. Is that something I should invest more time into? Should that be a, a good place where we can kind of gather and maybe talk more in depth about something that I mentioned in a video. It is a little easier to follow than just, you know, comments and comments and comments and trying to find someone's reply to a reply to a reply. If the community thing is something you think I should kind of dive into and look into, again, go downstairs into the comment section, let me know. Get to work video that resonated with a lot of people. That was the burnout O2 video. And I would just like to say that that get to work value has applied to many things in my life, including this very YouTube channel right here. It had been three or four years since I tried to make any decent content for my channel. I just let it go dormant. When I decided I was going to restart this channel, I sat around for months thinking about restarting the channel, thinking about how I would do it, thinking I needed a whole like content calendar and needed to have stuff planned out. And after sitting around for like six months, I just finally said, you know what? I'm just going to make a video and do it. I just got to work. If you'll go back through my channel here and find my why you aren't winning photo contest video, that was my first video in three or four years. And then just start clicking through the videos and you'll see like a mess going on. The lighting would change, the color grading would be off. I had some serious audio issues, like all those loud beeps. And I had those damn cat ears from that door frame going on behind me. It wasn't perfect. It wasn't great. I have been making these little hiccups and mistakes through this whole process of restarting my channel, but I got to work. You know, I just needed easy. I needed simple. But as I've started making more content, I've been more comfortable with adding a little extra quality to what I'm doing. Case in point. I'm currently broadcasting to you from my bed and boudoir. Now, setting up my little video setup here in my bedroom was the last resort. I really did not want work to come into the bedroom. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't want this to be a workspace. I always try to keep my home life and my work life separated as best I can. But during quarantine and during all that's going on, things are getting a little more muddled. I had a lot of conversations with Stacy, and I said, you know, really the probably best place for me to do these videos is if I moved my dresser into the closet and I set up something in this little corner of the bedroom, it would be quieter. Uh, it wouldn't take up the whole downstairs. So like all the kids would have to be on lockdown within their rooms or wherever they were. I could come up here, shoot a video, finish it up and put all my stuff away and it would just look like a little desk in the corner. And so far I'm really happy with it. Stacy has been absolutely a hundred billion percent supportive of whatever I do. You know, this is our last little bit of sanctuary. It's our last quiet spot in the house that isn't overrun by children. And then for me to take over and start setting up lights and have a tripod and this is where I shoot videos like I really was worried that that was encroaching on too much of our personal space that we have together. But she's amazing, y'all, and she's a billion percent supportive. I say all of that to say that if I would have waited for everything to be perfect and to have this like planned out content calendar, 
I never would have gotten started. I just needed to get to work. And now we've got some videos under our belt. Things are taking off. And last week I had my very first sponsored video. How cool is that? I, I think it's kind of cool. I feel accomplished that, you know, that someone sponsored my video. So I would again like to thank the good folks at Skillshare for sponsoring that video. And I would ask all of you to check out my link below in the description. Now this video is not being sponsored by Skillshare, but they are giving y'all two months of free premium membership if you use my link below. And I would appreciate it if you showed Skillshare some love because they showed me some love and I wanna show you guys some love and y'all can show me some love and show them some love and they can show you some love. And, and we're up here in my bedroom sharing the love all around. I appreciate that. You know what else I appreciate? I appreciate y'all's tips. You know, a buck, three dollars. Gentleman sent me a cup of coffee today. A few of you have been really generous with your tips. And I just wanna say, I wanna thank you. Um, bottom of my heart, my family thanks you. Thank you so much for letting me just take my pride and launch it out the window. And uh, y'all are helping me out. I appreciate that. You can cash me outside. You can Venmo me. You can PayPal me. All of that is down in the description. If you want to throw a dollar into the piggy bank, I am very much appreciative of your support. It is the Honor System Patreon channel here at uh, Zach Arias' YouTube place. Yeah, what else? What else? What else? Sponsors uh, that Twitter thread. I want to give just a special shout out to photographer Kurt O'Neill, who had a 10 tweet thread this past week that just hit me right in the chest. I'm not going to read the entire tweet thread, but I am going to link to it down in the description. If you're on Twitter, if you're a photographer, if you deal with self-doubt and self-valuing your worth, you got to go see Kurt's thread. It's fantastic. So down there, description, link, go check it out, retweet it, show him some love. All right, last thing on my list here for uh, stuff and things, upcoming videos. I'm gonna be working on my Fuji X100V video and I'm gonna do a little something different with it. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about the camera. I mean, it's a new camera, it's got a flip screen. You guys have already read about it. You've probably already seen a hundred YouTube videos about the camera. So I'm not really gonna talk about the camera that much. TLDR, it's an amazing camera. What I am gonna do is tell you about my process about making a promotional video for the camera. Fuji came to me in November of last year and they were like, Zach, we've got this new camera coming out. It's the brand new X100. Uh, would you like to do a promotional video? And I was like, uh, sure, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, I'll do a new video about the X100. That'll be great, absolutely. They hit me with some deadlines. I had a deadline in December that I needed to get photos from the camera to them. And then I had a January deadline for the promotional video. I started working on a video end of November, 1st of December, and it sucked. It was stupid. It was dumb. While I was able to hit the deadline for photos, it was looking like there's no way I'm gonna hit the deadline for the video. Like, it was stupid. I, and I just didn't have any good ideas. They gave me a little extra time on that video part. And as some of you probably have seen, the Cuba video came out. So my X100 video is gonna be sort of my behind the scenes of failing at a promotional video and then figuring something else out. The channel's less than 1,000 subscribers follow-up video is gonna be dropping this week. I have already started a playlist. I actually got under the hood this weekend fixed all my playlists, got all my videos organized. If you want to go look under the playlist tab, under that playlist tab, you're going to see a share and show the love playlist. And what I'm doing with that playlist is adding videos that I have found from the channels that you all have submitted that I think are, you know, pretty good. There's various reasons why I'm adding the videos that I'm adding to that playlist. And I'm going to talk about that in the follow-up video coming up this week. Um, oh, <laughs> this one, this one is going to be fun. I've been waiting five years to make this video. 
yeah this one's five years in the making now it's not going to be a massive expose about anything but i think it's going to be pretty fun and i'm excited to finally get this finished up right here oh it's heavy i actually had to talk to a couple of lawyers about the video that i'm going to make about what's in that box um just to kind of cover myself a little bit not trying to clickbait you but i'm trying to clickbait you picking a portfolio so i did a call for people to send me a portfolio of work i looked at everyone's websites or whatever you guys sent me i've narrowed it down to four or five i have not picked anyone yet or reached out to anyone i may do one or two folks i haven't decided yet but i have taken that video off of my publicly visible channel it's now unlisted thank you everyone who submitted uh, for the person or people that I pick, I will be in touch with you by the end of this week. Quarantine assignment. I'll do the follow-up video on that. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to showcase some of the amazing work that you guys sent in for that quarantine assignment. Then I've got the Filmic Pro video that many people have requested and the Shoot Q video that many people have requested. And I have some new critiques lined up as well. This week, I'm gonna be trying to record as much video as I can, and then editing and sending it out over the next probably like two weeks. Y'all hit me up downstairs in the comment section about that YouTube community. Um, if that's something that you'd like to see me put some time into, please click that Skillshare link for me. Go get yourself two free months of membership. That's pretty awesome, please do that. Thank you for all your tips. I really appreciate it. And as always, please like, please subscribe, and always please comment. If you have feedback or critique or questions about anything, I read every single comment left downstairs in the comment section. Come on down here to Unpainted Zacks, where I got everything you need for your bed and boudoir. Five points, if you know that reference. One of the greatest movies ever made. Boop, boop, boop. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you.